The use of uh, prizes or challenges at DARPA one over there. Yep. is something that DARPA has been doing for over 50 years. DARPA was created roughly 50 years ago by President Eisenhower, whose major purpose was to prevent technological surprise. The Soviets had beat us into space, and that was a great embarrassment to this country. And DARPA, or ARPA at that time, was created to never, ever let that happen again. And over the course of that time, we are now at a point where we fund everything from very theoretical mathematics, a lot of medicine, a lot of electronics. In fact, all of the electronics you have here can be brought back to have been created by DARPA or paid for by DARPA in the late 60s and early 70s. And we spend roughly $3 billion a year. Uh, now, I say we, because if you read the, uh, uh, the biography they have on me in, in one of the, the outputs here, you would come to the conclusion that the only achievement I've ever had in my life was that I was nominated to be the director of DARPA. And you know what? That probably is true. <laughs> that probably is true. To date, I would say that is the only really achievement I've had, and to date. Now, I'm no longer the director of DARPA. I'm the former director of DARPA. When I was asked to do this, I was the director of DARPA by Peter. And I said I would do it then, and I, I kept my promise and came up here today. But the use of challenges is, is old and new. Uh, DARPA uses, uses challenges to basically drive innovation. Uh, what we do is we create a criteria so hard, but hopefully something that is not violating any laws of physics. Of course, in biology, there are no laws. But a criteria so hard that it's clear that it cannot be done using current techniques. So anybody that's going to come and try that knows that they can't use current techniques and they have to come up with something new. The criteria that we always try is so broad that it can't be done by one person or one company. Now, I'm to the left of the, of the baby boomers, so I would call that multidisciplinary. But it really is collaboration. That you force that collaboration by making the problem so hard that it, can't, it needs new innovation and so broad that you know you can't do it alone. Okay. The criteria needs to be clear, concise, and measured without ambiguity. That's very important. The challenge needs to be something that's interesting. And if a prize is going to be the award, as opposed to a normal contract, which is what we would have done, then it needs a very low hurdle for people to get in. Now, by low hurdle, you can't expect somebody to go build a couple hundred million dollar infrastructure. You know, that takes a, a lot of money, and, and you really would lose a lot of people. So you want a very low hurdle. The Autonomous Vehicle Grand Challenge, which I'm going to give you some background on, met all of this criteria. Everybody owns a car. You can buy the computers that you need. You can buy the sensors. Even the controlling the car, uh, the actuators were available because of the handicap market. So the only thing missing was somebody's imagination on how to take the input from those sensors, convert it to uh, uh, controls, get that back out, and close that loop in that vehicle at speed. Now, we had many efforts trying to do this, because this is a very important military pr uh, problem. Remember, the D in DARPA is defense. So when we do something, we always have a, a defense or national security reason for doing it. We figured if we could have autonomous vehicles driving convoys with no people in them, imagine, IED threats would go away. The impact of them would be just destroying machinery. You know, it would just be machinery going through. Um, so this was a very critical DOD capability. On the other hand, the one thing that was the tipping point as to why we went and did the autonomous vehicles along with that critical military capability is that we were worried about the kids today who are not going into science and engineering. Now, a lot of people say it's lack of money. I don't believe that. I believe that it's lack of interesting problems where we have failed as a nation is to come up with very interesting, important problems for these kids to work on. Obama's current alternative energy is one of those, the first one I've heard since Reagan, and the one before that was Kennedy, where I grew up, where we were going to the moon. And that's where we failed. And so that, to me, was the thing that I hoped that the autonomous vehicle would do. The hurdle was low. I hoped to have a mini-type race to the moon and give us back uh, those people interested in science and technology by having them work on a problem that was interesting, and they had to learn science and technology in order to get there. Um, so let me get into it. Someday I'll write a book 
and I want all of you to buy the book. <laughs> and in that book, I will make it sound like we had a grand strategy, that it was all planned, all well thought out, you know, that I was the greatest strategist that ever lived. And I want you to know it's all bull. Okay? <laughs> Absolutely bull. But because it was really a lot of luck and just stumbling along and learning some of the things that you, you've heard today. We had three grand challenges. The first one was on uh, March 13th, uh, 2004. Uh, so that one was for 142 miles, 10 hours, $1 million. Why a million? It was a good number. You know, it sounded well, a million dollars. Uh, we had another one uh, because the first one failed. Uh, 132 miles, 10 hours, $2 million. Why $2 million? Well, um, because it was double $1 million. Yeah. And then we had a third one, the Urban Challenge. I'm going to go through each of these, and I'm going to try to give you some insight into what happened. So you've got two minutes to do it in. And I've got two minutes to do it in. Uh, so we'll go quickly. Go ahead. First one, 142 miles across the desert. It was incredible. The, t the command and control system that we had to build to put do this was equal to none in Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, next slide. It was a failure. We only went 7.4 miles at speed. It was a public relations disaster. We had, this first one had electrified the world. I mean, absolutely the world was watching this thing unfold, and we only went 7.4 miles by the red team, but at speed. But at speed, for the first time, these vehicles were traveling 30 to 40 miles an hour and having to make these decisions. And it would have been kind of, this is where I'm really proud of DARPA. It would have been easy to have not bothered to go on because this was a public relations disaster. I, I got even with the press later on by telling them, I'm glad you weren't at Kitty Hawk. <laughs> you know, because you guys would have said, Holy cow, you know? It was catapulted, it didn't have wheels, it flew for only 100 feet or so, or 100 yards. You know, what was this about? Um, but we went and did it again. Next one. Next, next slide, please. This one, you got smarter on laying it out. You notice that it, it was a lot of turning. This is all in, the, in, the, in, Nevada, in Nevada. A lot of obstacles, uh, really a tough challenge. Uh, next slide. Five people completed the course. Here we were just a year, a couple years earlier, nobody got further than 7.4 miles. We actually had people complete the course at speed. The greatest story is by this a company called the, uh, the Gray Team. And I'll just spend a little bit of time on that because that's really what this prize was all about. The Gray Team is a small organization in Louisiana. They're an insurance company. They're not an insurance company, they're insurance agents. And they read about this thing in popular science. They said, hey, we can do that. We can do that. I mean, look at this. They got 7.4 miles. We can do that. The fact that we got that far. They went. They built this car. Katrina came. We lost track of them. We thought they were gone. They showed up. They came in fourth. Absolutely fourth. Now, they had a strange thing happen to them. We noticed that when they were in the desert with no obstacles, they slowed down. When I got into the mountains where there was lots of, uh, lots of terrain, they sped up faster than anybody else. So I talked to them. I said, what happened here? And they went and looked, and they found out that what happened is that in the desert, when the contrast was low, it was like driving in fog. So what do you do when you drive in fog? You slow down. And when you have good uh, contrast, you go fast. I tried to figure out what would have happened if they had actually uh, done normal speed in the desert. And I can get this time to be very close to this time here. That it cost them probably on the, on the order of 30 minutes over that 130 miles. Now can you uh, start and, wrapping up now? Please? Okay. All right, next slide. Next slide. Tur urban challenge. I just want to get through the one, uh, one, one movie here. Next slide. Well, next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Urban challenge, next slide, was to do the same thing again only in an urban situation where before the vehicles were, the obstacles were there, but they were not moving. Uh, not only that, they were really not interacting with each other. But to really have these convoys drive, they were sooner or later had to go through a town, which meant they had to sooner or later meet other people, and there were going to be other autonomous vehicles with them. So we created this thing called, a, called the uh, Urban Challenge. Next slide. 
Uh, Human-driven traffic vehicles, we had the, you know, this is something that if you ever want to talk about logistics of trying to come up with how you're going to have people out there with these autonomous vehicles going at speed, uh, that was a chore. Next slide. We had a test areas, so like it was called a three-ring circus. Next slide. Uh, testing them. These were people being driven. These were autonomous vehicles mixed in to see if they could merge and, 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 and make and stop signs and all that. Go ahead. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, another test area. Go ahead. Next slide. Next slide. 11 teams only made it to the finals. And at that day of the finals, we were going to have, the, for the first time in history, autonomous vehicles with other autonomous vehicles and people driving cars and they had to accomplish these courses in less than six hours, but they had to do it obeying California driving laws. If they violated California driving laws, they were disqualified. So that meant all of these people had to go learn California driving laws, and they were effectively taking a driving test. So you had to pass that, and then if you made the time, the fastest would win. Next slide. Uh, the start area, go ahead. Right in the beginning, the nightmare happened. We had an autonomous traffic jam. Well, these vehicles all came to the same four-way cross uh, stop sign. It tells you what happened. Uh, actually, we had vehicles come. They saw the jam. They actually did a three-way turn and went back the other way. They were given a uh, they route. They had to go to certain locations. I mean, that was their chore, was to actually go to certain locations. And how they got there was up to them to figure out. Uh, next slide. We had over 2,000 safe vehicle interactions, head-on, intersection. These were near misses. I'll talk about them a little bit in a second with this movie. I don't think you will. <laughs> uh, next slide. <laughs> Seriously, you need to actually wrap up. And I'm going to do could that. Could you just give us the conclusion? I was, I, was, I was told I had more than 10 minutes, by the way. Well, not in this. OK. <laughs> uh, but these were, these, were the, uh, these were the conclusions. Next slide. We, we, one of the things with all these prizes, you have to be able to verify what's going on. We spent a lot of money having an airplane, very esoteric airplane, that tracked everything going on, which, which really saved us. Next slide. And now here's one that I really want to show you. Play the movie. This is the Tartan vehicle, which was told that it did pull out in traffic. It had a ticket written out for it by these people here. Notice it pulls out. Here's what it saw. It backs up. Go ahead, and it'll, it'll run one more time. This is just a few seconds. Comes over here. It stops, pulls out, sees that car, and stops. Now, now you're supposed to hold it right there. Remember, that vehicle has nobody in it. That vehicle had no communication with anybody else. It wasn't programmed for that event. It, it knew when it pulled out, it saw a vehicle to its left. It knew that it was in danger of a violation, and it backed itself up out of the way. And then noticed that the car that was there went away, because that car backed itself up. He shouldn't have, but he did. And then merrily went on his way. Can you imagine in this three and a half, four years, where we went from having nobody finish to having this kind of capability? Uh, next slide. Go ahead, pass um, it. We, we what's, show, what's we, the, I think we really have got to wrap we, I, up. I'm going to finish we, right we, now. We, we do want to have a conversation go here. Go ahead. Let's go. Finish it. Go past it. Stop it. Presumably there's a website where this is up. No, it? there's not. There should be. I think well, there's not. I think we've learned today. I'm afraid, I'm afraid there's not. <laughs> uh, anyways, this was, the, this was the, the final answer. Now, in closing, let me tell you, what DARPA, DARPA never finishes anything. We don't have any other of these challenges coming on. Our job is not to finish anything, but our job is to show that it can be done. Because that, quite frankly, is the biggest hurdle to, to, to progress and innovation. Not knowing that it can be done. And the only example I'll give you is Bannister. Some of you look old enough to remember Bannister. You probably remember Bannister. Four minute mile. In those days, doctors wrote theses that a human couldn't take in enough oxygen to run faster than four minutes. When Bannister broke that four-minute mile, three months later, three other people did it too. That's what these prizes are all about, showing that something can be done 
and then it, it takes it off uh, by itself. Anyways, sorry I took more time than I should have, but thank you very much. Thank you very much.